I'd like to go ahead and, and get started. Um, I'm Dave Solero, Assistant County Manager for Washoe County. This is Jamie Rodriguez, Management Analyst for Governor Affairs for with Washoe County. We'd like to welcome you all here tonight to talk about the Washoe County Economic Development and Conservation Act, otherwise known as the Washoe County Lands Bill. A um, couple of things we'd like to accomplish tonight is really to give you some information associated with this portion of the lands bill. Tonight is specific to uh, the uh, economic development portion of the bill. Thursday night, same room, same time, 5.30 p.m., we will be talking about the conservation portion of this bill. Um, most importantly, however, tonight is not about us giving you information, but it's also receiving your comments, your questions, and your concerns. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jamie so we can talk a little bit about process. Thank you. Good evening. Um, what the, the schedule right now, we're going to do a quick presentation. Just again, tonight is, is hearing from you guys, not us talking to you. So we're going to just do a quick high-level overview. Um, what we had outside that hopefully some of you grabbed were question cards. Um, that if you can, if you think of questions kind of through the presentation or if you have them already, if you can fill those out. Uh, we're just thinking lots of people may have the same questions and instead of everybody standing in line to ask the same question, we can save everybody a little bit of, of time. Um, Sarah Tone in the back in the blue shirt or Dana Searcy up here um, in the black will be who will collect your comment cards, so or your question cards, excuse me. Um, so if you just want to kind of raise your hand when you have one and they'll come over and grab those from you. Uh, we also are going to ask that you stay seated through the presentation. Uh, when we're finished and it's open for public comment, um, we're going to have you line up on this wall to go ahead and give your questions and comments um, with Dana, and then she'll help kind of filter everybody through to the microphone so that we don't have lots of people talking at the same time where we can't hear what's being said. Um, and the question and comment period will be timed to three minutes per person um, to ensure that we can get as many people heard as possible this evening. So uh, I want to thank you all for coming and appreciate your input. Uh, one other item, if I may. Um, so some information was provided out in the in the lobby. I just want to be clear, just so we're not uh, you know muddying the waters. Uh, that was information provided by citizens and not by Washoe County. The information from Washoe County this evening will be provided within this room. Just wanted to make sure that uh, we cleared up any confusion that might be out there. So uh, appreciate the 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 vigor of the citizen groups uh, to to provide some information. Uh, however, just want to make sure it's clear that the information provided by Washoe County is available on our website and here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the presentation so that we can get to kind of the question and comment portion of the meeting. And Fidel, if you would. Thank you. The region is working on the Washoe County Economic Development and Conservation Bill, also known as the Washoe County Lands Bill. This is really a way to, to capture the federal lands, utilize them for the highest and best use, uh, take the funding associated with that and put it into other, other programs necessary around the county. The reason this is so important right now, we've already seen such explosive growth in Washoe County since our recession ended. Washoe County is proposing our Economic Development and Conservation Act, or Federal Lands Bill, to Congress. It's such a great opportunity. It gives us the funding we need to do all the projects that our residents want, that businesses looking to come here want, and that we're able to really continue to grow this area in such a beautiful, well-managed way. This bill aims at working with our regional partners to support the growth and development, as well as protecting and completing the process of federal designation of lands in northern Washoe County. Patterned after a highly successful bill in Clark County, Washoe County is both preparing for growth and conserving land while bringing needed revenue to our area for the expanding infrastructure we need. We've seen great amounts of growth in the region. It's great for the economy, it's great for everybody else, but it's bringing a lot of people in. We want to make sure that this bill allows us to pick the right pieces of land to develop on at the right time. What it also does is the disposal boundary, the lands within it can already be sold by BLM. Only if it's sold now, all the proceeds go to D.C. This way, a lot of the proceeds get to stay here in our community and help our residents. From any of the lands sold within the disposal boundary, 5% goes to the state for education. 10% stays specifically within Washoe County for us to use for public safety, capital improvement, regional infrastructure, and other uses. The remaining 85% stays in a treasury that can be used by both BLM but also by us that we can help in conservation, fuels management reduction, which is a huge thing in Washoe County, as well as potentially purchasing land that needs to be maintained as open space. 
If we can control the way that we grow out in our region, where we've got infrastructure currently, we can build on those lands instead of skipping around them and building something else. That's really one of the beautiful parts about this bill. This helps make sure that we have smart growth within our region and that we really have a better control and say of what goes forward and what doesn't so that we're not further impacting our citizens in a negative way. So the Washoe County Economic Development and Conservation Bill actually has a whole conservation element. Uh, parts of northern Washoe County have what are called wilderness study areas. They've been in place with the federal government on BLM lands for at least the last 20, maybe even 30 years. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to really take a look at those areas, define what is wilderness, what really is uh, you know, lands that all people should be able to utilize, because wilderness has some characteristics uh, that we want to preserve. Uh, part of our pioneering spirit is also to have the open space. The quality of life we really like around here is the open space, but we've got that pioneering attitude. We've got mining and ranching. We want to be able to, to serve all purposes going into the future. So this is a way to take those wilderness study areas that are currently right now managed as wilderness and really determine what should be wilderness and what should be released for public use. The most important well, thing that we use. as the county have looked at in terms of the wilderness designation of what should go forward and what should not is getting as much input as we could. We are going to as many groups as we can think of. We are working with the tribal communities. We are working with the ranchers and the permit lease holders that are out there. We're working with the sportsmen who go out and hunt. We have worked with both the city of Reno and the city of Sparks with their requests. It also has several of our GIDs, including Incline Village GID and Sun Valley GID, which is areas that they're asking for to contain and continue open space and access to trails that they have within their improvement districts. It also includes the managing areas for the Truckee River. So we're looking at making sure that we maintain the water quality that we have for our residents, as well as the water that then continues down the river. We're going to grow. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to really grow in a way that makes sense to the current residents, to the future residents, future business, uh, really an opportunity for us to, to make some smart decisions now so that we're not struggling in the future. Um, sorry, and before I continue, just a couple quick things that we just realized we forgot to mention. Um, first, our commission bill sponsor, Commissioner Lucy, was planning on being here this evening. Unfortunately, he is under the weather. He was only able to make half of our Board of County Commissioners meeting this uh, today and he called a short while ago saying he really still wasn't feeling well so he wanted me to express his apologies for not being able to be here this evening um, to speak with you and, and hear you. Um, a follow up to that is that this meeting is being streamed um, and recorded so if you can please any comments make sure that you wait until you're up at the microphone um, for transparency for both those watching online and anybody who may go back and watch the archive video so we can make sure that all um, thoughts and opinions are, are shared with everybody. Um, so if we can just keep that in mind, please. We'll go ahead. So the Washoe County Economic Development and Conservation Act bill, it's broken up into two pieces. So the first piece is addressing economic development within the greater um, you know, Reno Sparks area um, to help for that expected population growth that we're experiencing. Uh, the second piece is the, is the designation of conservation lands within Washoe County. Um, really, those are all mostly in northern Washoe County. So again, tonight, we're focusing on just the economic disposal boundary piece um, and the economic development. So if you have questions or concerns about the conservation, if you can please come Thursday, um, and we'll be going through all of that. But tonight, the goal is really to be limited to the economic development portion. Um, we'll pull up a map here shortly, but within the disposal boundary, we have approximately 160,000 acres of federal land. Um, that does not count all of the lands that do have additional constraints. Um, so that would be land such as some of the uh, ACECs or, uh, thank you, areas of environmental concern, um, uh, as well as some of the sage grouse habitat areas that are within the disposal boundary. Um, it also doesn't take into account all areas within the disposal boundary that are greater than a 30 degree slope. Um, and that's important because per our building codes, you cannot develop land that is greater than a 30 degree slope. So that means those parcels or the portions of those parcels could not be developed within the disposal boundary itself. 
Oh, wait. Um, and also very important, um, all land sold will be done through a, comp a competitive bidding process. So the way that the process works is every year, uh, the localities being Washoe County, City of Reno, or City of Sparks would nominate parcels. Those would go to BLM to do that initial um, appraisal of the land. They will do the NEPA process um, and determine if the land can go forward for sale. They then set the fair market value. It goes to a public auction and it cannot be sold for less than what that appraised value is of the land. As for the proceeds of the sale, 5% goes to the state for education. 10% comes to the county um, used for the reasons listed here. So that's education, public safety, infrastructure, um, things that we need to do to help keep up with this growth as well. The remaining 85% is put into a federal treasury account. Um, that is used for both uh, BLM or Forest Service in terms of the work that they have to do for the parcels that are sold. They get reimbursed for that. Um, and then there's a long list of things that we can do with the remaining amount of money um, that we as the localities will be able to nominate projects and put them forward based on what monies is available in that account. Um, so process, again, very similar to all other lands bills in Nevada. We will uh, annually pick those parcels that we'll send to BLM. Um, again, really important that BLM and Forest Service have the ability to complete that NEPA process and determine if the, if the land should not be sold or should not be developed, then it gets taken off the list at that point. Um, so that we're making sure we're not selling land that for cultural purposes, for habitat purposes, um, what have you, that that land is not sold so that we are keeping those portions and those protections there within these lands. Um, and then again, it's a, public, it's a public auction, no less than fair market value is what will be collected for those parcels. Um, there are, again, a handful of areas within this disposal boundary that are not eligible for sale. Um, so that includes any of the areas of critical environmental concern, the Hungry Valley uh, Special Recreation Management Area, Sage Grouse Priority Habitat Management Areas, Mount Rose Wilderness, which while outside of the disposal boundary, but again, can't sell wilderness. Uh, the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe Reservation Land, none of that can be sold. The Reno Sparks Indian Colony, Bureau of Reclamation. So any of those parcels, if any of them are within the disposal boundary, still not eligible for sale. Um, part of the bill also allows for free, tra well, reduced price transfers, I should say. They're not free. Uh, we'll have to pay for the appraisals of the, va of the parcels themselves done by, again, either BLM or Forest Service. Um, so listed here is the entities that we have current transfers listed. Um, there are a couple that we are working with and we are expecting additional transfer requests from. That includes the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe and the uh, California, Nevada, Washoe Tribe. Um, and I'll just read now. Uh, Reno did send me an email this, uh, this afternoon um, that I understand that there was some feedback of one of the parcels that they had um, requested, which included recreation, tra recreation trails in Evans Canyon. Um, and that was to go to the city uh, community land trust for development of affordable housing. That parcel will be removed from their request. So we'll be updating that information on our website. Um, and we do have a representative from the city of Reno that can, there's questions about that, that they'll be able to help address. Um, but I did want to make sure that we got that out there, but otherwise these are the other 13 entities that are requesting some land transfers. Again, how the land transfers work. They are nominating the parcels that they are requesting. Um, their NEPA process still continues. So once the bill is finished, BLM, Forest Service, whoever's land it is, will have to complete the NEPA process. Um, the charge to the entities receiving the transfers is that cost of those appraisals. Um, and then we have six months to complete um, the, the transferees portion of that transfer request for those to go forward. Um, so those are included in the bill. On the website, we have a list of the transfer requests, including the APN numbers um, to help give everybody the information of where it's being requested um, and also to help with some of them that it's a large parcel, but what's really being requested is a small portion of that parcel. Um, and we're working on updating a, a clearer map to get that information out to 
everybody, and we hope to have that up very soon to help give a little bit more of a visual for what those land transfers are. Um, and then we do have actually two disposal boundaries. So the first is around, again, the greater kind of Reno Sparks area. There is a secondary disposal boundary around um, Gerlock that we were requested to include um, that we now have maps up for. And then we have some of the constraints listed on an additional map um, to help, again, give that real understanding that while we talk about approximately 160,000 acres, um, it's substantially less that could actually be developed. Um, so if we have question cards, um, we'll give us just a moment. We're going to, they're helping sort through those. We'll go through those first and then we'll start opening it up to public comment and question. Yeah. Hey, Fidel, can you pull up the constraints map for us, please? Thank you. Hey, Sarah, is this all of them or is it sorted in any way? Okay. 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 Okay, perfect. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with these co question cards and answer these. Um, and then we'll go ahead and open it up and everyone again can line up on this back wall for questions and comments and Dana will help direct everybody to uh, the microphone just to help manage that. So the question number one is, has the economic, de the economic benefit of the public lands involved in Washoe County been studied in depth? How about the economic costs of this bill? Um, in terms of costs of the bill, uh, in all fairness, I would assume really the cost is going to be to uh, those federal agencies for the work that they'll have to do, again, BLM or Forest Service, and that 85% of the proceeds from the sale, they're able to get reimbursed. So the cost really is to them, and they will be reimbursed for those costs. So the next, the, the other portion of this is about the economic benefit of the public lands involved in Washington County have been studied in depth. Um, I'm assuming that that's the, I mean, the, the essence of this bill is because of the economic impacts of growth within our, within our area right now. So, so the economic impact in, in at least uh, those that have proposed this bill is a positive impact to the region. So that, that's, the, that's the way I'm going to answer this question. If, I, if I've messed that up, please uh, make the comment at the, at the podium. Um, the next question is, what is the projected income Washoe County thinks will be set from the sale of the BLM land? Um, in all fairness, there is sincerely no way to determine that. Um, the reality of it is these lands will be sold over probably the next 30 to 40 years. So there's no way to project what the land value will be in five years, 10 years, let alone 30 to 40 years. Um, so there, there's been no study or determination of, of what we expect um, to, to receive from the sale of those lands, as well as there's really no way to determine which lands will be sold, what those values will be, or, or the timelining for, for when those will go forward. Question is, uh, how much water will this new development use, and what studies have been done to support the concept that sufficient water exists to support this development? Uh, are these studies available to the public? Uh, so, the, so the discussion around water um, is not necessarily around whether new development has enough water. The region has a set amount of water, and that has been studied uh, by a lot of different groups. In fact, in this, this local area, uh, legislature has required that, uh, that our, uh, our, our growth, our, our total population is set about, uh, it, it's capped by the amount of water available. And so the Western Region Water Commission is a website that you can go to that has studies. It has a regional water management plan, and this information is available uh, on that website. The next question is, at the current time, the proposed bill as posted on the website is full of blanks. Once those details are filled in, will the public be able to view it and comment on it before it's submitted for vote, and how long will it be available? Um, 
What is online right now is a current proposal. It's meant to have blanks. It's meant to be changed. Um, so as soon as we complete and get the feedback and make the final changes, that absolutely will be posted on the website um, with ample time for the public to be able to read it before there's any sort of a vote. Question is, what does the addition of these additional lands mean for infrastructure, road, sewer, power, schools? Have studies been done to determine the cost of the infrastructure projects, and are these studies available to the public? Uh, so again, the, um, you know, the additional lands are lands that are already here. In fact, part of this process that we're going through, some of the lands identified for, dispo or for transfer to entities, much like Regional Transportation Commission, talk directly to the need for additional infrastructure in our area to support growth. And so this, this bill allows for expanded infrastructure, infrastructure that is already contemplated within existing transportation plans or water infrastructure plans. And, and again, those individual entities listed on, this, uh, on the slide that Jamie had listed on our website, you can go to those entities and see their plans for future growth. So that information is available to the public and it is on those websites of those each individual entities. Next question is, apparently the decision has been made that Washoe County <coughs> needs this land for more growth. What is the process, studies, decision matrix of what's causing this decision? Um, Washoe County has seen substantial growth um, in the last handful of years. There's, there's no news there. Um, and the state projection is that our population is going to continue to grow. Um, we're feeling the impacts of that growth now there's nothing that's showing that that, in growth will, that that growth, excuse me, will decrease um, or stop anytime soon. So this is a reaction to the growth that we've seen um, and that all state projections have showed will continue. So a couple of the last questions that I have here are talking about lands that are not considered within this bill. And so, I, so the question is, whether, you know, one of the questions is whether UNR land is considered in this bill. Uh, UNR land is already private land. It, you know, the UNR can do with uh, their land what they choose to do with their land, uh, you know, as long as it meets the requirements of, of the City of Reno uh, Development Code. So this is specific to currently owned federal lands, either uh, the Bureau of Land Management or United States Forest Service that are within this boundary. Those are the lands we're talking about. We're not talking about developing other lands that are out there. Those could, uh, could be done uh, currently. Again, the nice part about this bill is even though the current process allows for the Bureau of Land Management or U.S. Forest Service to sell properties, uh, this is an opportunity for us to be able to capture some of that, those funds available after the sale of those lands to utilize them for other things specific in our region related to conservation and growth and infrastructure, fire protection, those types of things. So um, that's the, the benefit of going through this process and creating an economic development boundary in the Truckee Meadows area. The next question is why isn't the constraints map posted on the Washington County website? Um, that is a map that we finished today at about one-ish. Um, that I've sent to our IT staff and asked them to update that. Um, unfortunately, there is work that, is, that they have to do associated with our normal Board of County Commissioners meeting. So I fully expect that that map will be up and available um, sometime tomorrow. So, so I think instead of us just reading these questions, I think what, what the best thing might be to do is to go ahead and have uh, you all come up and uh, give us your concerns, your comments, your questions, um, discussion around this. We've got these captured and certainly I think through this process we will get much of these same kind of comments and questions uh, answered. I think it would be a little bit more interactive for you all if we, if we did it that way. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to have uh, you all start. Uh, if you've got a question you'd like to come up, certainly if you, if you, uh, you know, would rather have us sit here and, and read these comments, that's, that's one thing. But I think it would be much more productive and fruitful for us to have you ask us questions or state your comments and your concerns. So I'm going to jump into the next one real quick while we have people line up because I've got two that are essentially the same question. And it is that Forest Service lands were, were mentioned and are there any within the disposal boundary? Um, there is quite literally one Forest Service parcel that is within the disposal boundary that's actually eligible for um, disposal, and it is in the 
I guess, southwest kind of corner of the disposal boundary that Dave's going to kind of walk over and point out. Um, it is one approximately 40 acre lot that again, that's the only forest service land that is actually within the disposal boundary that is eligible for sale. Um, one comment that I will make is if you had seen the previous maps, uh, the, the southern boundary line there has moved um, and that was in reaction to some conversations that we had with Forest Service about many cultural artifacts being on some of those southern Forest Service parcels and that they would not feel comfortable with those parcels being sold or developed. And so the disposal boundary line was actually moved up um, north of the Mount Rose Highway to, to address those concerns from Forest Service to make sure that that land stayed safe. All right, hopefully you'll restart my three minutes. Uh, uh, my name's Lou Bubal, I live in Washoe Valley. Uh, my wife and I have lived out there for uh, 14 years. We have three kids. Uh, that have gone to uh, school here, still go to school here. Uh, we've done a lot of camping. We've been up to the Fox Range. We've been out to Massacre Rim. Um, we have been to these places that are being talked about wilderness. And so, I'm a, sorry, I'm going to stop you very quickly. I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to be here on Thursday, so I'm here to provide my comments okay. on this bill. Um, and I wish I could talk more about the local development, uh, but my concern is the okay. wilderness area. Um, okay. I, can, I, can I ask questions or am I only providing comments? It's question or comments, you just have three minutes total. There's nothing on the web, I've, I've read, the, I did the survey, there's nothing on the survey that says why these lands are not being approved for wilderness, other than you say they're not eligible under 1964 standards. Is there information from the county as to why they believe they're not eligible for 1964 designation? So if we can talk afterwards, and I'm happy I, to I, send you some information. In all fairness, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time today um, talking about an issue I, that we're going to be reiterating I, I, on I would, Thursday. I would love to talk about it today. Perfect. So I, again, when, this is, when the meeting's over, no, I, I'm I happy to. I would love to talk about it now in front of everybody. On the record. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Again, in all fairness, that is the me that, that is the that, purpose. That, of isn't that my days. choice? Isn't it his time? Yes. Why do you keep talking? Yeah, okay. Whoa, well, well, guys. I, again, I need I need the crowd to please. The, again, it, it's for please. just. It's You're taking his time. He, every, you keep saying, oh, 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 oh. let him talk. So on the website, there are four criteria that have been outlined as the discussion around wilderness. So I direct you back to the website to, to look at the four criteria that are outlined on the website talking about why things, uh, at least in the discussions that we had through the process with the stakeholders, were considered for wilderness and those that were uh, in it. They did where, not meet that criteria. Where on the website? It is Can on the main please? page of the website, uh, washoecounty.us forward slash landbill. Okay. I've, I've been to the page for the survey. There is no information except so, to say that the county believes this does not qualify. No, again, if you go to the actual website and there's some cards out on the table that help you with the website so you don't have to remember it, um, there is some information, again, on the criteria that we looked at and, and some of our help, what helped determine our facts. Um, also on the website is a, is a the, the main page has kind of a summary. Under conservation, you'll see there's a fact sheet that gives, I think it's four, three, maybe three or four pages of additional information of how we came up with those proposals. Okay, I'll review them and submit additional comments. Uh, I, I, generally, I would say I've been out there. These are um, remote, isolated parcels. Every one of them, even the areas that you have decided are not worthy of wilderness. Um, I've spent uh, multiple weekends out there with my family, my kids, my friends. Um, I, I can't imagine a better place, a more, remote place that is deserving of the ultimate protection of wilderness than uh, Massacre Rim, which is designated for a dark sky designation. I don't have any idea what the county thinks they'll do with these lands. Um, uh, you know, running cattle out there, you, uh, that doesn't change that. Um, and, uh, you know, for my friends, for uh, anybody who's ever been out there, um, whoever might go out there, who might think about going out there, um, opening these up for development and disposal is a terrible, terrible idea. Um, this is a remote protected area and it should remain that way. 
Thank you for your comments. I will, the one response I will say, um, the opening or the release of the wilderness study area does not mean that it's sold. It's not part of the disposal. It's not meant for development. So well, again, I, I, I would like to direct you please to our website and if we'd like, if you'd like to have follow-up conversations, I'm more than happy to. Well, I, I believe BLM has all these not designated for disposal currently. Uh, do you anticipate them it's being? Not, it's not disposal. So again, I would direct you to the website. There's a difference between disposal and release. Those are, I, those are I, no, two I, different. I, I understand that, but if you're not going to subject them to disposal, what is the point of releasing them from wilderness? Again, I would, I would direct you to the website to get okay. some information. I, again, I would say it's not particularly clear from uh, the information that the county has put out to evaluate these standards, and I would contest uh, any movement forward on this ground. Okay, thank you. My name is Dave Schnocke. I'm the board president of the Tahoe Rim Trail Association. For those who aren't aware, the Tahoe Rim Trail is a trail that circumnavigates Lake Tahoe all the way around 170 plus miles. Internationally famous, attracts over 400,000 users a year. The, bit, the main attraction of the Tahoe Rim Trail is the fact that it is a continuous trail around the lake. What came up in this bill though, uh, near Diamond Peak, the Incline Village General Improvement District, and at the time, UNR were both asking for property that would eliminate the national forest lands that the trail travels over between those two properties. Now verbally we've heard that uh, UNR has backed out of the deal, so it, General uh, IVGIT is still in, uh, asking for property. The problem we have, and this is going to apply to any other place that has trails or is planning to build trails, Trail organizations like ours use volunteers. We have volunteer service agreements. We have very specific agreements with the Forest Service that give us protections of tort protection, workman's comp, things like that while we're working and maintaining the trail. What happened when General Improvement District asked for those couple of parcels uh, near Diamond Peak, um, it has the Tahoe Rim Trail going in and out several times of their property. There's no markers, there's no boundary. If we have an accident on their property, we're under their jurisdiction. We would have to have separate sign-in sheets. We have to have separate agreements with them. And we're not even clearly marked as to where that is. We see this sort of thing as, it's, it, IFGIT has been very good about talking to us and, and trying to come to some agreement. But when it comes down in the end, it's just an additional complication of trying to maintain these, this long trail uh, through that area. Not only that, it's one of the heaviest used parts of the Tahoe Rim Trail. We probably are, we are definitely thinking in the long term that we need additional trails in that area. Uh, this could cause problems if we want to build because we'd be going in and out of different jurisdictions that right now would all be Forest Service lands. So we had a meeting of the Board of Directors and they've asked that uh, we please take these uh, parcels out of consideration that cross the Tahoe Rim Trail. Um, I think maybe in the future maybe we can work something out, but right now we don't seem to have any option of trying to change the boundary of the parcels. All we seem to have an option of is coming up and saying, uh, you know, we're against the bill or for the bill. Uh, so in that case, I'm afraid we're in the bind of saying we're against the bill. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kirk Peterson. I'm a resident of Reno, have been since 1979. Um, and first I have to apologize for my outburst. I do have PTSD and it is triggered by propaganda, lies, and manipulation. And your little movie had all of that in it. And I just want to make sure, please don't try to mess with me, okay? Um, first question I have is, how did you come to this draft act without public input? If this is your first public presentation, where did this come from? Who drafted this? Um, so the, the, the process for the bill started really in 2016. We did hold some public meetings right. in 2016, so this is not our first public meeting. Right. I was aware of that, but all, a lot of things that were brought up in that meeting have not been addressed. And the other thing is, is why is this on the fast track? If that map just went up on your website, why wasn't this up when people could look at it and study it? Who is pushing this to get over done right now? Yes. What's the agenda? Tell me that. So what happened from 2016 when we held our first meetings until the, the, the relaunch of, of the new maps was taking input 
and making, making many of the changes that people requested. If there's some that have been missed, I would love to hear what you feel was missed that we can take under consideration again. Um, but that, that is what caused the change between the maps as well as the language and the, the new push for the information on the website. Okay. Um, you know, there's a resource management plan pending for the Carson City District, which includes most of your disposal area. That is going to have substantially new information in it. So why are you putting the cart before the horse and deciding on the BLM lands before you know what the jurisdiction and what the management of that is going to be? And in particular, you know that there are three pending lands with wilderness characteristics in those north valleys. There is extension of, you know, in, in fact, your boundaries have just changed. Um, from the last block boundary I saw, you've now included the ACEC out at Incandescent Rocks which also is slated to be expanded to include the monkey condos area to help protect and manage those as well. I don't know why you suddenly decided you needed that in your disposal boundary. There's also, like I said, three LWCs in the area, and there's a Peterson Mountain Sand Hills ACEC, which has, takes care of the wildlife habitat in that northern part of the valley that goes back to 1949 in providing habitat for those deer herds. Have you considered that? Have you talked to the endow? Have you looked at um, even the, uh, I mean, the county has actually supported that land for scenic lands on various times and for wildlife habitat. I don't know why you've suddenly flip-flopped and are pushing forward with this, with this disposal. So again, as I mentioned in the presentation, all of the ACECs, this one, yeah. Um, even the pending ones? Yes. All, again, it's, it's okay. BLM land until it's sold. Okay. So BLM can do with that land. They can, they can, ACECs are always subject to change, right? Those are usually about 20 year um, plans, but they're, once an ACEC is there, it's extended, but new ACECs show up. Um, so nothing about this prohibits that from happening or stops that from happening. Um, that, that is a normal par part of BLM and that'll continue to happen with BLM land whether in the disposal boundary or not. Okay, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Ian Bigley. I am an environmental justice organizer with the Progressive Leadership Alliance of Nevada. Um, the question that I have for you today um, in the context of the presentation that's been given uh, is in regards to the concept of safe development. And the presentation was saying that it was this bill will allow for safe development and putting the right kinds of projects in the right places. Um, but I'm concerned as far as uh, how vague that was. What is the county's definition of what safe development is? How did the county develop that definition? And what mechanisms for accountability are there in the long run to ensure that um, this development, uh, if it goes forward, is uh, smart development? So the way lands develop within Washoe County are governed by a couple of things. So we have individual uh, cities and unincorporated Washoe County, and both of those, all of those entities are covered under an umbrella of the Regional Planning Commission. And so there is a regional plan that talks about growth and why we grow and how we grow, and all of our plans within, at the local jurisdiction need to feed up into that plan. So that's really the process that, that these new lands uh, would go through. Right now, the regional plan skirts around all of these federal lands, uh, and they don't have any designations uh, associated with them. Um, there's a process going on right now that talks about, or that it is actually an update to the regional plan. And that update to the regional plan, uh, we've been in contact with the regional uh, planning agency. They understand what we're, what we're trying to accomplish and how that works. You've got to remember, again, this is a boundary. And this boundary is going to create benefits for when and if uh, federal lands are sold. Uh, one of the things, if you look at the map of Reno, Sparks, and Washoe County, uh, the city boundaries s jump all around um, you know, these, these federal lands. And they keep continuing to go out and out. And costs of development are more, you know, it's more expensive. It's harder for us to provide services as the farther out we go. And so this is a way to actually bring some of that, that development back towards the central core. Uh, and that's what's smart about this piece, where we've already got infrastructure in place, where we've already got the roadway network. We don't have to go build more. Uh, so that's that's the thought around so that. So that's financially smart, but are there um, <laughs> measures of social or environmental responsibility included right. in that definition of smart? Right. So one of the, one of the things that we all enjoy in this area are all the open spaces and the quality of life that that brings, uh, you know, to us. 
So that's why on this constraints map, you'll see a bunch of trailheads and open spaces and, and things like that. Um, you know, we are going to grow, uh, regardless of whether Washoe County does this economic development bill or not. Uh, the question is, are we going to grow in a manner that you know, is acceptable to the, uh, you know, the residents today? And so with this, we're hoping that, that smart decisions can be made. Just because the land is within this boundary doesn't mean that this land gets sold. There's a process that's going to be set up to go through and identify parcels that make sense for growth with our uh, current development process. And just to be clear, that guidance is coming from the regional development plan. There's been no specific advisors for this project guiding the county as to what environmental or socially responsible development would look like. So it's, you know, we, we have a whole host of uh, uh, professional planners and, and, uh, uh, and engineers on all of, our, all of our staffs that will be working through this process and part of the process, to, you know, to nominate and identify, uh, basically constrain certain lands, uh, put, uh, put together uh, requirements for those lands. So I would I'll, say yes. I'll let other people have their time, but thank, thank you. you. Hi, um, my name is Susan Jutton, and um, I live in Washoe Valley. And my question is about um, the process, uh, the NEPA process relative to lands that um, may be A, first released, but not just those, B, within the disposal boundary, um, C, maybe um, purchased by something like a mining concern. And what happens to NEPA then? Because this is what happened um, in Lyon County, who had another bill that apparently you're using as an example. And there's something called Pumpkin Hollow out there, um, where there is now, in Lyon County, and we as a state do not have anywhere near the level of protections that land gets under NEPA. So this land is being developed with virtually um, none of the protections that it would have if it were federal land still and that there was um, some sort of lease process. And I'm very concerned about the WSAs because I know there's mineral values up, um, up in that northwest uh, part of the state. And I don't know who's been talking to you, but in my paranoid mind, I'm thinking, oh, mining companies, they have their eye on X parcels up there, and this gives them, do you know what I'm saying? I, 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 it's just suspicious. Um, so a, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, nothing about this bill exempts or excludes NEPA. So NEPA will continue for- Until for it's privatized. Which is true of, of NEPA in general. If it, once BLM sells the land, which is what they use the NEPA process That's for, right. once it's sold, it's sold. So right. the, the, the NEPA does not continue after the land is sold, but the That's NEPA right. process will occur before any land is sold. But that doesn't apply to development that will happen after the land is privatized. And you're talking about 404,000 acres of WSA that are gonna go through release. And the, we all know that this boundary that you guys have is permeable and moves like it does in Las Vegas. And so, so this land, conceivably, and not just con theoretically, is now privatized. NEPA no longer applies because it's not federal land. And I'm saying, how do we um, get that same level of protection? We don't. And there's, I think this is a really a legitimate concern about that beautiful land that we're all talking about that are WSAs now, 404,000 acres. So again, NEPA, NEPA continues. Um, in terms of sale to private land, we're really talking about the disposal boundary. Um, right. So that is, again, that's 160-ish thousand acres. Um, it's really smaller than that once we put in all the constraints. Um, so again, NEPA continues. Nothing about this bill exempts or changes NEPA um, and, and how that you're, process yeah, works. Yeah, thank you, but you're not answering my question. Thank you. Um, Gary Houck, East Washoe Valley. Um, so my, my concerns are about the, uh, the proceeds from the sale of these lands, and I, I don't think that they're, uh, 
defined enough. You know, we got 60% goes to the federal government, 10% goes to education. Well, my corporate taxes doubled, you know, a couple of years ago to go to education. And what's that got me now? We're 53rd in the state. You know, we don't even have 53 states, but, you know, it's like, where, where does the money go? What, I, you know, I don't know. And then, and then I'm concerned about impact fees. You know, we're so dependent on growth in Washoe County um, you know, because developers don't, you know, they, oh, they donate an acre for a school and an acre for a fire department, but then it still comes down on the taxpayer to, to fund that infrastructure. <clears throat> so I'd, I'd really like to see the, some of the proceeds going to, and it, let's like plan some roads ahead of time. It took us 30 years to build the Southwest Connector and it's not even done yet. And a, and a freeway through Carson City. Uh, um, you know, it's always, uh, you know, the, the cart in front of the horse, I think. Anyway, that's my gripe. Hello, I'm Juanita Cox. Uh, this is how it's going down. I'm going to use my three minutes. You're going to take notes, and you can answer me after I've used my three minutes. I've come, uh, I came to this area when I was two months old. I'm 70 years old. I've been here, seen it all, seen governments grow beyond what they should ever have grown. I've seen all these different various schemes to continue growing government and growing their empires. empires. I've seen you bringing in your experts, your professionals, that haven't a clue what we're doing here in this area. That's what we always get is BS. I say that, uh, you, you, you say that there's no impact. Excuse me, there's always impact. We've been impacted in our schools. Of course, that's in, on all the news all the time, and yet we're the last, we're beyond, we're 51st in the whole United States. We're behind D.C. That's where our money keeps sinkholing it or black holing it. Now, you, you want to develop all of this, yet you have all these fire stations and police stations that we can't afford to fill. We can't afford to keep those stations open. Uh, it's it's just insanity. Now, let's talk about the roads. You have uh, the Tesla effect, of course, and you've now got roads, United States highways, et cetera, that are so full that the people can't have get out and get to the hospital if there's emergencies. The only way to save people is through that helicopter. It is crazy. For easily 30 years, I've been saying, try to work with the, the train and use the train tracks for light rail. That would help. But has anybody done one thing about that? No. Your professionals, your, your people that are so smart, your planners, they have no friggin' clue. And, and we continue doing this all the time. You, um, you, I just see all the money just going down a big black hole. And you're, you, you, it's on a fast track. People don't have enough time. You've already developed it. You, this is the, the plan, and you're just now allowing the people to have their word so you can stick it down their throat like everything else. People come in, more and more development, and, and we're out of water. Oh, don't worry. You've been here forever. You can have all the water. No, we can't have water to water our trees. We're going to be like Pahrump pretty soon, where we'll be limited to just a few drops of water. Thank you. Sandra Mack, Reno.
This is the Washoe County Disposal Boundary Map. The red areas represent all the approved housing developments in the metropolitan area. Here, Bob, you want to hold it up? Yeah. Jim is, yeah, the red areas represent all the approved housing developments in the metropolitan area. Jim is holding the spreadsheet of the uh, 207 housing developments. These developments have been approved by either Washoe County Commissioners or Reno and Sparks Councilpersons. There are currently 74,000 approved housing units. Multiply 74,000 units by 2.5 persons per unit. The metropolitan area will have an additional 185,000 residents. Adding the projected population of 185,000 to the current population of 450, we will have a population of 635, which is what our water consultant has said Tumwa has enough water for. With the proposed, adding to the projected, oh, with the proposed Washoe County lands bill, there will be approximately 73,000 acres, this is from the old data, of BLM public land sold to developers for housing development. Given the average population of five persons per acre, this potentially adds an additional 365,000 new residents in the metropolitan area. If the Washoe County lands bill is passed, the pro total projected population is a million residents. My advice is to fix the problems we already have and not to create any more problems. My name is Bob Thomason. I've uh, lived in Washoe County for about 30 years or 35 years maybe. And I have some concerns about this uh, proposed act. The, this proposed Washoe County Economic Development and Conservation Act is by far the most important legislation in Washoe County history. And the negative consequences are far-reaching and totally irreversible. A large part of Washoe County's rapid and excessive growth problem emanates from the Tahoe Regional Industrial Center, which is not even in Washoe County. The county has no say whatsoever in what happens at the TRIC, but events there dramatically affect Washoe County residents. This proposed act is just a response to outside events rather than providing needed leadership at a crucial time. One long-term solution is to expand the Reno-Sparks metropolitan area to the east through the Truckee River corridor and expand the jurisdiction of the Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Authority to cover portions of Lyon and Story counties, very similar to the Tahoe Regional Planning Authority. They cover several counties even cross the state line. That will give Washoe County some input on development that at present benefits other counties with only negative consequences for Washoe County. Expanding the TMRPA jurisdiction will require genuine leadership, but that is what we're supposed to be paying the commissioners for. According to the Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Authority, th this ties in with Sandy's presentation, there are already 60,000 approved new housing units on the books. And that's more than enough housing already on the books for a population increase of more than 100,000 people. Clearly, the 70,000 acres of open space public land that will be put into the hands of land developers under the proposed bill needs to stay as open space public land. There is no need for transferring it other than lining the pockets of land developers. We need good planning and strategic growth, not the land developers free for all that would result from this odious proposed bill. This proposed act is based on narrow jurisdictional provincialism. The scope and consequences are too vast to be entrusted to county commissioners who are working on behalf of land developers. This bill needs to be killed until a regional planning organization can be formed 
that will take the overall picture into consideration, not just the self-serving desires of the land developers. Thank you. Jim Richards, Washoe County Residence. This bill, they refer to Clark County, which is Las Vegas, as an example. They just referred to it a while ago. Do people remember what Clark County was a few years ago? How many boarded up houses? How many abandoned buildings? Who got rich off that? The developers, the contractors, who have addresses in California and Wall Street, not Nevada. The same thing is going here. The land developers that will come in here will be the high rollers from California and Wall Street, build, 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 do what they have to do until the next crash, and also what is left over? A bunch of construction workers who then become wards of the state collecting unemployment and workman's comp. This happened here in 2008. Do people do not remember that? It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Like we said, we have plenty of housing units on the record to be built. My question is, why do we have to provide housing units for people that aren't even here yet? They talk about growth and all this other stuff. Why not deal with the people that are here, that are living here, and most people I know are living here, are living here to look over open space, not over Walmarts, not over asphalt parking lots, not over housing developments. Have any of you guys been down to South of Washoe recently? Yeah. It's just, it's unbelievable what's happening. As if they need more and more of that, forget it. Water is an issue. It keeps on being put aside. We have enough for 635,000 acres according to, um, 635,000 people according to Tumwa. What about the next drought series? Part of that water issue is gonna be a huge septic tank which they're gonna put up in the north valleys of about 40 acres to re-energize the water table. Good luck. Costs, Washington County will increase our taxes. Who's gonna pay for the protection of the BLM property if it turns over Washington County as far as fire protection, police protection, and the development uh, costs? We will also lose our PILT money from the BLM, and PILT money is just a, peanut, a little bit of money here and there, a buck or two an acre, but it's still money that's coming in to Washoe County for the use of the land within their county. Sewers, has anybody talked about the sewers? Digging up streets, huge massive sewer lines to try and accommodate this next 150, 200,000 people. Flooding, anybody been up the North Valley the past couple of years? Are you still building dikes up there? Are you gonna have more asphalt parking lots up there with houses? Where's the water gonna percolate to? Again, you know, it's just take care of the people that live here first. The North Valley people are getting hosed on this whole deal. They've still got lakes up there. Air quality, I don't even have to mention about air quality, but you know, just go figure that one out. Thank you for this opportunity to comment. But I would ask that you don't start that three minutes until after I describe who I am, because it takes about 15 seconds. But um, I'm Karen Boger, board member of the Nevada chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, and I'm um, the issues chairman. So now you could start. <laughs> um, as with other Nevada co County public lands bills, our organization recognizes the need for a conveyance of select parcels of public land to our Nevada communities for public purposes, infrastructure purposes, and development. The process must be one that is carefully vetted with stakeholders and the broader public, what we have come to term the Nevada way. Because we all own our public lands our, as our American heritage and savings account for the future, that public extends beyond our county and even state boundaries. To date, the current process uh, resulting in this disposal proposed disposal boundary for public lands in Washoe County does not meet that requirement in our opinion. We ask that this process slow down and seek broader public input than has occurred to date. 
um, Nevada BHA joins other sportsman groups in strongly opposing the degree of public land critical to wildlife included within the disposal boundary of the current expanded draft proposal. In particular, the areas of concern um, the areas of concern I'm about to list must remain outside the disposal boundary for wildlife uh, purposes. One, the power of mountains, wintering grounds on lower slopes for both mule deer and antelope herds, as well as some summer occupation at higher levels. These mountains have been a traditional hunting area for local families for generations. The mule deer and antelope populations here have been challenged by increasing press of development and fragmented habitat. A remnant few sage grouse still reside there as witnessed by people I know who live up there. We object to bringing more pressure to the valuable wildlife resources of these mountains. Secondly, lands with wilderness character, or LWC, the portion of the PARAs designated as LWC for its essentially roadless character remains almost entirely within the disposal boundary. The expansion of the disposal boundary now also includes a portion of Thule Peak, LWC, just north of the Paras. LWCs are valuable to wildlife as a refuge from the human activities that tend to disperse them and valuable for wildlife habitat as protection from further fragmentation. Third, the Virginia Range, the dog skins and the sand hills, or maybe that's fourth, fifth, and sixth. The Truckee Loyalton, oh, Okay, mule deer herd has been dwindling for a variety of reasons, one of which is fragmentation. Um, this area needs to be withdrawn. Migration corridors between all those valuable habitats have not even, to my knowledge, been, um, been mentioned or considered. Those must be considered and not within disposal boundaries. Thank you. Rex Flowers, uh, Washoe County resident, 68 years, member or director of the Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife, speaking on behalf of myself. Um, I would like to see a change to the disposal boundary, allowing a corridor through the Truckee River Canyon so that you could access those uh, lower lands uh, north and west of Wadsworth for development. However, I would like to see that east boundary taken down into the, low, into the lower levels, uh, away from the Paras, and the Paras uh, kept outside of it for wildlife concerns. Same with the Virginia Range, the Dogskin Range, or the Dogskin Mountains, um, Bedell Flats, Sand Mountains, uh, Tule Peak, all of those are critical uh, wildlife habitats, whether it be for mule deer uh, migrations or antelope and uh, deer uh, winter ranges some sage grouse habitat. Those areas need to be protected. And what I'm afraid of is if they come within your jurisdiction and BLM isn't over those, we will lose those lands because we have many wildland fires and we need restoration, habitat restoration projects afterwards. And I do not believe the county is prepared or has a plan in place to protect that habitat and to fight those wildland fires. Um, it's all those areas that you do get in your disposal. I believe if there are trails or roads going accessing public lands right now, there should be an easement written in to protect those trails and the road access for our multiple use users on those public lands so that should properties be sold, properties would have a written easement guarantee and a right of way for the public as a whole. Uh, that's my comments. Thank you. Hi, my name is Devin Snyder. I'm a rangeland ecologist working for the University of Nevada, Reno, and City of Reno resident for the past six years. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Um, I have Perhaps, perhaps disjointed comments because I only found out about this yesterday. Um, my concern, main concern is that this proposal has not had appropriate scoping. I know that some people in this room have heard about this uh, several years ago. 
but it is obvious that the public has concerns and there's not adequate information online. We need parcel maps with labels, we need answers to questions, and we need uh, descriptions of each wilderness study area that is going to be designated and we need reasons explained online in detail with maps as to why certain areas are going to become NCAs, certain areas will become um, just regular federal lands, and why the uh, wilderness designations have been chosen. It's very, I have read the website, it is not clear at all. Um, things I am concerned about with the uh, urban development, um, as I said before, who will manage the wildfires that are inevitable at the urban wildland interface? Um, very concerned about that since there are many human ignitions uh, around Washoe County. Um, I'm really upset that I can't make it to the conservation day, um, but I'm sure there will be many comments there. Um, I would like to see a, an analysis of opportunities for infill within the existing boundary of the city of Reno um, and surrounding suburbs. I don't think that is adequately explained why this is absolutely necessary considering the numerous vacant lots within town. Um, while there are difficulties in managing wilderness, I think that the, I think that Washoe County in proposing this build has an exceptional opportunity to give the public a say in something that would really just be an act of Congress that usually sort of happens at a much larger political scale. And I think, um, I really hope that that type of uh, scoping will occur in future meetings. I hope there are future meetings about this bill and I hope that they are well advertised. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Dennis Galeri. I'm a lifelong resident of Washoe County. I appreciate an opportunity to, to talk with you tonight, um, 18 months after the last time I talked. The thing that concerns me, if you could scroll your map down just a bit so that we can look at the lands that you've added, not down, but the other direction, so that we can see all those lands that got added to this bill. Um, keep going. Yeah. More yet. So that line that goes across the very top, the red line, that actually increased substantially from the last time I was at a public meeting, and people objected to the previous boundary, which was much smaller. Again, on the lower right, there's a huge block of public land which is now included in the disposal boundary. Both of those parcels are adjacent to the Pyramid Lake Indian Reservation, and they are wild and open lands now. They have no development in them. There are no houses in most of them. There are no structures in most of them. These are open lands. Now, if you look in the center, upper right center, you'll see all that white stuff with the little lines drawn all over it. Those are all private lands, and most of them have one house on 40 acres or nothing. That's all private land, and it's not slated for development currently. So I question the county's resolve in stretching this boundary of disposal lands all the way around all this public land. And I'm extremely concerned that we're going to lose these wildlife areas, this open space, this recreational land. And I don't see a need for it. I would also point out that the Bureau of Land Management has been consolidating lands in the checkerboard for the express purpose of trying to provide for the public access and public uses of those lands. They have acquired thousands of acres at a loss of other places in the state of Nevada. So it's been to our advantage to have the BLM acquiring those lands which had been railroad checkerboard lands. And you can see that many of those lands are indeed contiguous public land today. And I object strenuously to having them included in this boundary. I object strenuously to it. And I don't think that you were honest and treated the public honestly since the 2016 meeting where you actually didn't look at our concerns but instead added to the disposal boundary. I find that very, very disconcerting. I would also point out that as you, if you get what you want and you start to dispose of these public lands, you are going to be creating a greater urban interface for public land versus private land. 
that urban interface becomes even more difficult to manage. And so you're creating for the BLM a nightmare where we have additional urban lands being added to supposedly public lands. It is an unmanageable nightmare that is being created. Let me just say one last thing that I don't think that Reno and Sparks and Washoe County should be going down the path of the Las Vegas route of sprawl, which makes it nearly an hour to get from one end of Las Vegas to the Henderson area on the other side. Thank you very much. Hello, for the record, my name is Gary Schmidt. For background information, I have resided and conducted business in Washoe County for 46 years. I'm the longtime owner and operator of the Reindeer Lodge on Mount Rose Highway. I own the Tannenbaum Ski Area parking lot, which is five acres of tourist commercial, which a lot of people don't realize is the elevation trailhead of 400 acres of Galena Park. You can come up Galena Park, you have to cross my property to get to the highway and go a short distance on the highway right away. From there, you can go all the way to the Rim Trail on Lake Tahoe and let everybody know that I intend to preserve that access for prosperity uh, when that property is developed. I also own uh, approximately 20 parcels of land in Washoe County, uh, including 120 acres just north of uh, Gerlach. I have a home in Gerlach. Property in Gerlach is a natural hot and cold water springs. It's a centuries old watering hole for wildlife and cattle there. Uh, I can develop about 200 homes on my 200 acres as I mix zoning everything down to 16 lots to the acre uh, to 40 acre zoning. I do have plans of developing. I currently own two homes, one at the Reindeer Lodge and one in Gerlach, and I plan to build myself a third home on my property. That's the extent of my current plans on development. I'm concerned about the nature of this meeting. It's called a public meeting, but I'm told that there's no agenda and it's not complying with the open meeting law. So it's not perhaps official public meeting, although I'm not sure how it was called. Uh, I might challenge whether it's a public meeting in total violation of the open meeting law or it's just a, just a sham that you call a public meeting because if it's not a public meeting under the, uh, the control of the open meeting law, none of your comments have to be recorded in any fashion. No minutes have to be taken. There could be no record of this meeting whatsoever. And I invite all of you to look, look at NRS 241-035. To, uh, NRS 241 is the open meeting law. But within that, for future meetings that you go to, I would point out uh, uh, 241.035D, which says, the substance of the remarks, this is what has to be included in the minutes. Uh, the substance of the remarks by any member of the general public who addresses the meeting, uh, member of the general public that, it, that the, who requests that the minutes reflect those remarks. And or if you s submit written documentation and you request that they be attached to the minutes. If you don't request that, the only thing that has to be in the minutes is that you spoke here. Keep that in mind at all public meetings. And I believe this is maybe a public meeting, I'm not sure, but if it's not, it's, it, I think that these forums should not be held in other than public meeting forums that comply with the open meeting law. Thank you. So this is a public input session so that we can get your input uh, through this process. We're providing information and we're gathering it back. This is being recorded. All of this is, you know, we mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting. So uh, this will be recorded and placed on the, the website for anybody to view. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to provide comments on the, the bill here. My name is Alan Mandel. I'm the vice chairman for the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe. and. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, a lot of good comments um, that have been brought up this evening. We've submitted comments, but I'm just going to um, remind and um, some a couple of the more important ones. I think the, one of the most important uh, uh, issues that we have, of course, is water quality and water quality for the two endangered species of Pyramid Lake. 
and that's specifically for the lower Truckee River. So any type of any type of development that occurs upstream from Lake Tahoe affects us um, and affects those fish and our ability for recovery and restoration. So we feel that we feel that any sale of any public lands that part of those proceeds should come back into the restoration efforts of the Lower Truckee River and the recovery efforts of the two endangered species. That, that's a really important component of ours. Secondly is the, a cultural um, aspect of everything. We've been, here, we've been here since time immemorial and we have relatives buried everywhere. You know, we have items everywhere throughout, throughout the area. One of the things that we'd like to work with and ensure uh, work with you is to include language that when the disposal of the land occurs, that all the federal typo requirements stay with the land. So that way a developer can't just come in and bulldoze it because once it turns into a private, there's a little bit more leeway, or not, there's a lot more leeway uh, with regards to uh, cultural items. So we'd like to work with you on including any type of language that can um, ensure that, you know, the appropriate tribe, whether it's Reno Sparks, I see Washoe here, or the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe are notified to work with you um, in case anything are found. The, <coughs> the other large concern, and the gentleman, uh, just spoke of uh, just a minute ago. There's approximately 18,000 acres that have been included in this particular map that wasn't included in the 2016 map. And so the areas of concern really for us are the lower Para Mountains, just north of Oling House. That's approximately 11,000 acres and then the 8,000 acres up above uh, the Sutcliffe Highway. Um, and I can't remember that canyon now, so. Mullins, yeah, Mullins, Mullins, and then uh, Winnemucca Ranch up into that area, up into the Paiute Meadows and stuff up into that area. So we have some concerns uh, with regards to those lands being included without us being really consulted from the last lands map um, and being included. So, you know, we have, uh, we can, we'll continue our discussions uh, on that, but um, those are the largest points are, and we'll be submitting s some additional comments to you. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Irvin Jim. I am a representative, chairman of the Hungalelti community. We are the California side of the Washoe tribe in Nevada and California. Um, a brief history on the Washoe people. Um, the county here is named after our people. Our ancestral footprint starts down on the west side of the Sierras, down by Bear Valley, Murphy's Big Trees, and it goes all the way up to the, wet, to the east, over to the Silver Springs, the south end of Pyramid Lake, all the way up to the south end of Honey Lake, all the way over into Sierra Valley, and all the way back down on the west side. And <clears throat> we have documented history and facts. We believe, as a Washoe people, that we've been here since the beginning of time. We have a footprint, we have a name for every place around here, the Truckee Meadows, all the way from, all the way out to Pyramid Lake. And I don't wanna step on anybody's toes, but our documented history and what we are, our dialect puts us here for over, since the beginning of time. We are one of the oldest speaking tribes in the state of California and Nevada, since this is our area. And it really bothers me that the Board of Supervisors are, Washoe County does not reach out to the Washoe tribe. I don't even think they know the history of the Washoe tribe, us being here, and everybody's talking about all this land and everything. And we, you know, it's, it's sad, you know? I mean, we have to have that open communication for us to work together. And as a Washoe tribal member and a representative, where we have and where we were put down in Douglas County and our ancestral footprint is really sad. So we would like a chance to be a part of this county and to expand to show our kids, our people, of our ancestral footprint of where we're at. Good evening. Um, quality of life, it's priceless. These federal lands, once... 
Oh, excuse me. Can I start over again? Then? Yes, I'll start. I'll start your time over. But yeah, if you can put well, your name on the you. record, please. Uh, my name's Kathy Bowling. I'm from Callahan Ranch, and um, thank you for your time. Um, I've been participating in the process of all these meetings since about 1988, and I got to this county in 1964. So I've seen a lot of changes, and unfortunately, I've yet to see very much smart growth. Um, just take a look at Swan Lake. We're all going to be paying for that, those poor people out there, because the developer skated out and did not put a barrier around certain sections of that lake they were flooded and now we all have to pay for it i don't like the economics i don't like subsidizing developers until our regional plan catches up with protecting the 435 citizens of washoe county from having to subsidize the development community i don't want to see any more federal especially federal lands sold or given, almost, you know, maybe they pay something, but it's not what they're really worth. The, these federal lands are priceless. The quality of life they give us is priceless. There's a one-time proceeds that we collect from them, and we lose our rights to ever access those lands again. A few people will own them. We can't go trespassing on their, their private properties. It's theirs now. We lose it forever. Paper water rights versus wet water in the ground to supply this growth. Um, paper water rights have been grossly over-appropriated throughout Nevada. And um, I'd like to know exactly, well, there is no way to know exactly how much water is in the ground, but we've got a lot of estimates. Um, I would also like to see um, redevelopment of these blighted areas within Sparks and Reno. Heaven knows there's enough of them. Let's redevelop those before we start giving up more public land that's going to create more urban sprawl. Uh, that's going to create a lot more need for infrastructure, a lot more pollution. And um, I don't think anybody here is in favor of that. Let's see, and like I said, the proceeds from that federal property sale is going to be a one-time deal, and we lose it forever. That's just not acceptable. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your patience for listening to everybody. Um, my name is Frank Schenk. I lived in Cold Springs over 20 years. I was raised in Silver Springs. I grew up near, I mean, I went to graduate Fernley and went to school up there. And, um, well, one thing I wanted to ask a question is, uh, could this be on the ballot? Because I, I just think that this is everybody's land. You know, I mean, we should have a say. And I really feel that strongly that this should be on the ballot. And I, that's a question that I'd really like to ask. And I've, I've gone through a lot of meetings with city council and county and, you know, and I've seen land swaps going on and right now there's a current development, um, Cold Springs, Stonegate, and, you know, once, once you approve these lands, it always feels like once it's done, the people are just shut out, you know, it seems like on a, on a, some issue, on a lot of issues, you know, like police, fire, you know, there's already one development there's no guarantee for police. There's no guarantee for fire. They're just going to hope that, well, we'll see how the tax revenue does, and then we'll see if there's going to be fire or police. You know, well, I don't think that's, that's good enough, and I really, like to, I really like to see this on the ballot, and I like, really like to see before anything is approved that people have a say and on the rules and on, on fire and police before it put in place, because once it's done, the public shut out. They're just completely shut out. And uh, I, I went to um, Austin, Texas for a week to s see my boy. And um, we drove to San Antonio, and I talked to a lot of people, and they said at one time there was open la land, open fields. It's all just 
for 60 miles, nothing but driving. And, uh, and people just said the quality of life has just gone down because of this u utopia that they're going to create and growth. So I just, you know, hope you do the right thing, and uh, thank you for listening. Hi. My name is Nick Moss. I'm a native Nevadan, grandson of a native Nevadan. And uh, I didn't come here to roast you, but I do have some concerns. Uh, I'm concerned about the large areas that are potentially being sold and the way that will impact wildlife, the winter range, the migration corridors, the sage-grouse habitat. Sage-grouse habitat is important not just for sage-grouse, it's important because every animal in the Great Basin essentially relies on sage-grouse. The sage-grouse is kind of the canary in our coal mine. I would ask that this bill be amended in some way to protect public access and protect the WSAs and LWCs. And I would like to remind everyone that there is a lot of, you know, there's limited water in, for development in our area. Uh, I would like to remind the, the board here that uh, I don't think I heard anyone speak in favor of the current action. Just show of hands, is anyone in favor of the current action? Okay, please consider that. And I would also like to remind everyone that there is a huge liability when lands are transferred from the federal government to local governments. Right now, BLM, Division of Forestry, they do the law enforcement, they do the fire protection. If this land is sold to private people, the liability will be transferred to the county and city to provide the fire and law enforcement. That's a huge liability, and I would like to remind everyone of that. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going, everyone? My name's, my name's Matthew Needs. I'm a transplant here from Montana, uh, but I love living here in Washoe County. Uh, a little bit of my backstory: I come, came here for school. I'm a geological engineering student, uh, but what allows me to go to school here is that I'm a fishing guide on the Truckee River. Um, as you know, during the drought, there wasn't very much water in the Truckee River, so that made it pretty hard for me to go to school. Um, so I would like to remind everyone that our water is very limited here, as we all know. And we all liked this idea of smart development, but the map that I see up here on the PowerPoint to me isn't smart development. Um, that seems like an absolutely huge area, and if we'd like to see it consolidated, you know, what is the benefit, this is a question for you guys, what is the benefit to outline such a large boundary and what is the benefit for the public and the county in particular? So the benefit within the boundary is that, again, the monies when those lands are sold gets utilized for some of the things that have been spoken about you know, this evening, infrastructure, fire protection, those types of things. The reason the boundary is so large is because, again, as it was pointed out this evening, this is an act of Congress to do. Uh, so Washington County feels that there's one shot at this ability for Ever. So that's that's the you know that was part of the discussion around the boundary. So you said earlier that only a small portion of the proposed 160,000 acres uh, would most likely be developed. Um, what is the what is the economically forecasted to happen in this area to even justify that much growth? So again, the growth is going to occur as the growth occurs. Uh, this is ability to, for us to uh, potentially uh, define where that growth actually occurs. We've got a regional plan right now that doesn't contemplate a lot of these federal lands, and so we build around them, we, we move along, we, we, we continue to go further and further out. Um, so you know, taking this bill, the ability to sell land, uh, and 
putting it within the confines of the other plans and, and processes that we have in place, that's where you start to, to capitalize on the ability to economically make smart decisions so instead of moving the, around them and just leaving them be. So with the boundary that you have up there, if that boundary does go through and you guys get what you want here, um, what does the land designation become for the BLM land within that boundary? So the designation stays currently as it is. Um, you know, so that, that land stays owned by the BLM uh, with all the designations that are currently on it. Uh, however, there are parcels of land in here that a developer or someone may have an idea about how we can grow and expand. They will nominate that land and it will go through a process to determine, both with the BLM and Washoe County, whether that land is suitable for development because we've got all these other plans in place and so we need to make sure that all that wraps in. Um, so it's, you know, I think there's a misconception that just because there's a boundary here, all of the land within that boundary becomes ownership of Washoe County. Uh, it stays ownership of the federal government until such time as someone comes forward with a plan and a process and we can, uh, we can take a look at that and, and make the decision whether that's appropriate for our community or not. Thanks for your time. Hello, uh, for the record, uh, David Von Segern, 25-year uh, resident of Reno. Uh, what I've come here to say is uh, I, I object to the process here. Uh, one public meeting in, two years ago to bring this bill to where it is now is utterly in, in, insufficient. And I think everybody in this room realizes that we have not been involved in making this bill. I think one the county commissioners and when the planning departments re, uh, thought that we needed to expand, we needed to do some things with public land, and yes, we do need to do some things. When they realized that, they needed to make a pact with the citizens to bring this bill from the bottom up, right. not from the top down. And what we've seen is a, is a, is a top down process. And I wanna make a, an analogy here. I hope, I hope you appreciate this. and. Uh, we had the federal government and the Department of Energy said that we were going to have Yucca Mountain in Nevada 30 years ago. And they kept pushing it and pushing it, and it has not happened yet. But it became, uh, became a problem because the people no longer trusted what the DOE said. They no longer trusted what the federal government said, and I see that arising here. We don't know what is driving this in, in some ways that we didn't know what was driving Yucca Mountain. Now, uh, David and, and Jamie, I know this is not your, f your fault, but I think this is a message you needed to take back to commissioners. This process has to slow down. I wanna see real public participation as we bring this bill from the bottom up. Hello and thank you. My name is Sam Monteleone and I'm a multiple use advocate. Um, I have two questions. One question is directed to you, sir. You knew coming into this meeting that someone was gonna ask you how much water is there? And that question was asked and you said, go to a website and check it out yourself. I think that you should have had that number written down somewhere so you could have shared that with us. Um, I will make sure that that information is provided on our <clears throat> website. With these other frequently asked questions, you know, we'll, we will prepare a document that, that outlines that. So thank you very much. No, I, uh, I worked for the uh, Nevada Division of Water Resources for seven or eight years, and the basins in northern Nevada were my responsibility. And I know at one time, Marshall County had the applications for, to move that underground water down here to Washoe County, down here to the Reno Sparks area. And those applications have since been um, removed or canceled. So I don't know where you're gonna get the additional water other than what Truckee River, the Truckee Meadows Water Authority has for, that, for the 635,000 people. My, um, and other gentleman took away my, my question or my comment about, you know, how come that there's nobody here in favor of this thing. So I appreciate that. And my last question is, how come there's only one of the five commissioners here on a, on, um, on a situation that is so important to Washoe County? So 
I thank you for the question. The reason is there, there's two there's two reasons for it. One, there's a requirement for not to have a quorum because we're not taking action, so we can't have more than two commissioners. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, it was the intention of Commissioner Lucy to be here, um, and it was very last minute that he fell ill and was unable to attend, and in all fairness, the other commissioners are not free to be here this evening. So the intention was to have both Commissioner Herman and Commissioner Lucy here. Can we here. get a doctor's note from Commissioner Lucy? <laughs> Thank you. You did. Hi, I'm Lori Bellis, native Nevadan. I just have a couple of questions. Um, one is, how was the disposal boundary determined and why was it increased from the last map to this map? Um, so quite frankly, I was not involved in the initial uh, discussion of the, the disposal boundary. I know there was a lot of discussion around, you know, uh, lands uh, that uh, have been skipped around. Uh, but at the same time, you notice that the boundary doesn't go to the borders of Washoe County. So there was a lot of discussion around, as other people have brought up, uh, lands that had been purchased through uh, Southern Nevada Public Lands Management Act funds uh, for the benefit of the, the area. So a lot of uh, area down in Washoe Valley was purchased in big blocks to, to, uh, to create uh, recreational areas. Right. Um, so there are other areas like that within the boundary. However, you know, trying not to make this just a piecemeal type boundary with little donuts and all these other sorts of things, we thought it would be cleaner just to create a large boundary uh, and then let the process define that those lands uh, would not be uh, considered for um, for sale due to the way that they were they were purchased. Because if uh, they were purchased with Southern Nevada Public Lands Ma Management Act money, then that has to be repaid. So why would we sell a piece of land that we would just have to repay? And so mm -hmm. you know that, that those are all discussions that, that had occurred. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know it was pointed out that we have one you know really one shot at uh, at trying to define a boundary. Uh, that you know that makes sense and I've heard some comments tonight and we've taken a bunch of notes uh, to really discuss what does that boundary look like and so we appreciate that that information and we'll certainly go back as we move this uh, move this forward and take those comments into into consideration so I hope and I think that's question. one of my biggest concerns is that the intent is to have it be as big as possible and then deal with the constraints afterwards instead of the constraints up front because what I would like to see is that you know a lot of the constraints like you know you're not going to be able to build on ACECs like you're not going to be able to sell that land and all of the different designations that are up there why not just exclude those areas right off the bat so then people aren't concerned about that anymore because we're, we're just all con continuously concerned about what the process is going to be and we're going to have to be vigilant every year when this comes up to make sure that those areas aren't developed on because of the particular constraints, particularly the environmental and wildlife constraints and water constraints. Right, so we can, we can certainly do that. But you've got to rem we've got to remember at the end of the day, this boundary has got to be defined uh, by a survey uh, of the area. And so part of that is, you know, uh, kind of ease of doing things and, and trying not to waste a bunch of time and effort to define all that. But certainly we've got some information. We can, we can work on some language within the bill potentially that would, that would uh, allay uh, some of the concerns. And that's what I'm wondering about. Couldn't you just have an exclusions defined within the bill rather than having to donut hole things out? Right. No, I, 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 certainly, under, I certainly understand the question. And, you know, okay. So it's really more of a process question and kind of you know, how do we actually go about doing that? So okay. I certainly captured that. And then my other question is, um, how will the Washoe County Regional Open Space and Natural Resource Management Plan inform this process? So again, that, that along with some of our other development plans are parts of the pl process that we, that we look at when we make those decisions about selling the land or not. So those are all parts that not nece don't necessarily define the boundary. However, they are taken into consideration as the projects, sorry, the, the land potentials are brought forward. Uh, all of those plans are still in place. They're adopted by the, by the local governments. Those are parts of the things that will uh, create the... Um, I guess conditions for potential sale or not. And and so going into that then and talking about the greater than 30% slopes when you're looking at selling land, I mean you're not going to be able to section that out. So it potentially a developer would buy an area that had 30% slopes but they wouldn't be able to develop on that part of it, right? That is correct. 
is that, w will that also be true then with other constraints? That um, will be true with other constraints. Okay. And then my last question is, can we, the public, get access to the GIS layers that created all of these maps so that we can do in-depth analysis on this plan? So one of, the, one of the concerns I've got with our GIS, I, I'm not a GIS guy, so I don't know how this works. I can certainly ask the question, you know, how these layers were developed, what they look like, do they mean anything in a, in a greater context. Certainly if there's a, an opportunity, we can put the, you know, the, the files on the website and you can pull them down off of there. I, I don't see an issue with that, but I've got to consult with our GIS people. A so list no of shape files, it, files, it would be great. I'll okay. just give you a list. <laughs> That's all, thank you. Hi, I'm Paula Povolitis, and I'm a, um, a resident of Lemon Valley, and I'm out there in the flood. And before I start speaking, I'd also like to let everybody know that I'm running for office, and I'm running in that district, so this is really important to me. Um, I want to go back to the, um, the, the, the developers and this whole idea of that we are going to grow to a million people. I just, what is driving our growth? Is that part of the impact around this? And where are we factoring in how climate change is gonna affect us in these next 10, 10, 10 years? We're, I, I really need some answers about what's driving growth. I think currently the policies of the state of Nevada are, are a portion of what's driving some of these things. We have Economic Development Authority of Western Nevada. I mean, there's a lot of process to grow uh, based on the economic uh, conditions that we were in recently. And Give so me some examples of what economic things are hap happening in that report, because we don't have any information. You're giving us a lot of vagueness. Well, so, so I, th I think it's been in the news, uh, you know, quite a bit that this region is growing because of the economic uh, prosperity of the state of Nevada right now. What and are those things that are causing that? Give me some examples. So there's a, you know, there's a large development, an industrial development. We're talking east, about Tesla. Can you not town. just say it? I can. Okay. I mean, Tahoe, now, Reno the, the, the areas so. that we're talking about in terms of this development that's going out more toward real rural areas, what are we going to be building hospitals? Are we going to be building schools? Are we going to be, I mean, are, are we talking about people coming here to retire? Are we talking about people who are coming here? I know there's this hope that Reno is going to become Silicon Valley of Nevada. And I don't know how many of you guys think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. We chose to live here because we don't want to be Silicon Valley. And we have one little developer out there that's, you know, got, got something going on, and now we think he's going to, like, dot it all the way around. That's my fear. And, and I don't know. I want to protect wild horses, and it doesn't seem like that project out there is doing a really good job on it. So I'm concerned that we are, like, not really thinking and getting the, the information we need to hear about what is driving economic development to attract a half a million people to come and live here. I don't see it happening. What, what wages are we going to give to the people who we think are coming? I look at us as a really important retirement community. That's, you're going to need hospitals and, and medical care. We're going to need, you know, schools if, if, if families are coming, but I don't, see it, I don't see it driven by what you guys um, are anticipating that's going to happen. I get that developers have to make some money. Well, they need a project. <laughs> they can't make money without projects. But I'm suspicious about how this is being done. And so I just want to let, let everyone know in the room that Thursday you better come back and bring 10 people. Hello, my name is Larry Dwyer, and I've uh, lived in, uh, mo moved to Reno first in 1967. Uh, I have not been here, or at least my people have not been here since the beginning of time, like some, some of the other folks, and I really appreciate their comments, and I think we should be listening to those people who uh, have been here since the beginning of time. They knew how to care for the land. They knew how to respect nature and the rest of the land. What I, I think we're doing, oh, w one thing I, I do want to take exception to is the comments that growth is inevitable. That is absolutely not true. It is unsustainable. Unlimited growth is absolutely unsustainable. 
And what we need to do is focus on what we can do to limit some of this population growth. Economic growth and population growth should be separated. They are not one and the same. Um, the disposal boundary that has been created looks like it's been created in a very ham-handed way. It's like a developer's wet dream. I mean, everything is thrown into it. Um, in the process, I mean, it, it just gives the appearance that, you know, somebody's paying off somebody to get all of this thrown in there. It's probably not true, but it gives the appearance that that is happening. And I think that is a dangerous thing for Washoe County. Um, BLM manage management of our public lands is not always perfect, but I think it is a whole lot better than what would happen if these lands were turned over to Washoe County and then sold to the highest bidder. What should happen at the very least is, as many people have commented on, the boundary is just inappropriate in so many ways. And I, I don't have to go into all those uh, individual things about, you know, the beautiful areas up around uh, Needle Rock and Monkey Condos and Incandescent Rocks, all those gorgeous areas. But at the very least, you folks should go back to the drawing board and create a boundary that includes a few very specific parcels of land. Because there are some reasons to exchange federal lands. And, and I would support that, but not in this ludicrous, uh, huge uh, proposal that you've got here. Thank you. Hello, Lake and Neil Mortimer to go home to LA, hung out to go home to on and wash it to my name is Neil Mortimer. I'm the chairman of the Washoe Tribe of Nevada and California. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. We'd like to thank everybody for being here on behalf of our tribe. And for the record, I heard you say earlier that everything north of Mount Rose has been taken out of the Washoe Lands Bill. Is that correct? So the properties at Incline are no longer up for disposal? No. So, so again, as we mentioned during our meeting, so there's a difference between the disposal boundary and the transfer. Okay. So the disposal boundary was moved north of... Uh, Mount Rose Highway, but the transfers exist as they did per our meeting and, and on the website. Thank you for the clarification. Little history was described by some of our members and tribal leaders as they've come up to the mic, and I think you've heard from a lot of residents in your community. One of the customs and traditions of our people is that we always value and respect our elders and those that are older than us for the knowledge and the wisdom that they bring, and it doesn't sound like this is too popular in its current form amongst the constituents here that you folks represent, and I understand that as an elected official as well, that it's always right to do right by our members and the members of our community. So I think that's something that needs to be stated and restated as it has been in the most tactful manner. In regards to the transfers of property in Lake Tahoe, the Washoe Tribe has put in an official request to make those transfers to the Washoe Tribe. And it's not a transfer. Initially, it's a return of lands that are valuable to the tribe. I heard one of the trails gentlemen get up a second ago and speak that, you know, the incline or the trail circumventing or circum uh, navigating the lake is an important part of recreation and it's world renowned. Well, our families have been transversing those mountaintops for a long time as well. So I think what a better opportunity in the Washoe County Lands Bill than to incorporate the Washoe tribe in the language. We work across many counties, four or five different counties, two different states. We are not the largest tribe, but we are not the only tribe in the area. Washoe County is ancestral Washoe land as described by Chairman Jim a moment ago to the community here. So I think it's important that we work forward in the spirit of government to government consultation. I would like to know if there's gonna be ongoing government consultation with the Washoe tribe in the lands bill. So absolutely, as per our, our previous meetings, Chairman, um, I, as I mentioned when you came in, I did receive your email walking out the door, so I've not, in all fairness, had a chance to go through it, but absolutely we'll continue 
to talk and, and work through the process. Well, we certainly appreciate that. And also when it comes to the table, we are always interested in acquisition of lands for housing and development for our membership, restoration through the laws and the ways of the world and politics. Many of our members were forced out of the Reno area. So it's important for us to be able to be back into our local area. So I think if sustained growth is something that needs to be taken care of and is an initiative for the county and its leadership, I think depleting the quality of life of the people of this area native and non-native is something that needs to be paramount because if you look at everybody that wants to come here there's a reason they want to come here because of the things that have taken place in other places that were talked about 50 years ago so i want to make sure for the record that's on the record and we look forward to working with Doug washoe county on the washoe county lands bill thank you chairman Just before you get started, if I may, uh, so we've got the room until about 7.30 tonight, and so, I, so it looks like we've got three more speakers. Um, so I'd like to, to go through the, you know, get the comments there. I also want to remind everybody that we have a way for you to provide us meaningful con meaningful uh, input on our, on our website. Uh, that information, I believe, was provided out in the, in the front uh, at the tables. Uh, so uh, please, there's, there's been a discussion here about meaningful input and people wanting to, to, to provide that input. So there's a way to do that on our, on our website and I, I uh, really encourage everyone to, to take, it, take advantage of that. Thank you. My name is Lynn Munt and I'm a resident of Washoe County. Um, I apologize, I'm not quite up to speed on this uh, act, but I'm very interested in it. And I have a question, is there a time frame that this act has to be completed in finished, voted on? There, there is not, no. Good. Um, I think listening tonight, I feel like you've had, you've developed this with a very small group of stakeholders. City of Reno, City of Sparks, Washoe County, the tribes weren't even included. And what I'm hearing tonight is that we need to have more stakeholders involved in developing this bill so that some of these fears are dealt with, answered, um, taken into consideration. I think that a lot of the fear comes from not having had input other than a meeting, I think two years ago in 2016, a public meeting where supposedly those comments were taken into effect. And I think a good um, way to have a meeting is to have formal stakeholders in every aspect of the public land. There's no question that the planners in all the entities do a very good job of planning, but they're heavily influenced by the districts that they work for. And those districts need tax money to get uh, infrastructure and get caught up on things and to take care of new people that want to move here. So I think it's really important that with, along with that, that you expand your stakeholders in developing this to make sure that the residents that actually live here that end up paying the taxes for that infrastructure get represented at the beginning as you develop this land bill so that their concerns for open spaces included where they want it, where they need it, so that they feel like they've had a buy-in to this. I think that I, from what I've heard, I'm very much for a Washoe County Land Act. I just am not for this one without this, all this input. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. For the record, my name is Laura Mijanovic. I'm a resident of Washoe, Washoe County for many years, since 1981. I own my house. I own several other houses. I pay my handsome rewards to Washoe County every year. And I'm coming here to oppose this from the beginning as far as the process and as far as the, the meat of the interest driving this development because I find that there is a serious flaw in both regards. Number one, there is I don't think there is more public issue or an uh, issue of more interest for the public than what you're dealing with today. And yet, from what I hear, I found out very recently, uh, there has not been enough public input. Uh, something of this import should just uh, be subject 
Actually, let me tell you this before we forget, and I will repeat it. It needs to be put in the, on the ballot. It's too serious of a question for, be, for being decided by county officials and uh, land developers. That's not enough. And also, you know, nothing personal with you or any particular uh, member of any commission or, or of the county. Uh, there is a tendency for local governments to get bigger, right? And uh, developers uh, obviously uh, profit out of that. At the expense of what is this growth going to happen? And also I want to question with all respect what you said about growth is coming. There's nothing we can do. I think that as someone pointed out very correctly here, who or what drives growth? And how much growth is allowed by an area? You cannot forget that's the most important part of any discussion a public body can have. And if you're not gonna have public input, it will be subject to so much suspicion, it could open the floodgates of litigation. All I can tell you is that put it on the ballot. This cannot be decided by a few people and it will be impacting our liabilities for the new areas, <laughs> privatized areas. Who is going to take care of the expenses? Whose detriment is, is going to be on? Who is going to be holding or taking the burden of all this uh, development? All I'm telling you. Thank you. My name is Larry Calkins, and I'm uh, president of the uh, Nevada Four Wheel Drive Association. I'm not here for yes or no or pro or con this particular thing. Just it's a process. We uh, we recently at the uh, home boat uh, OHV dog and whatever else show it was the combined just just over in the other rooms over here about oh about a month ago. Uh, had a booth and we talked to literally hundreds of people as they walked by us and we asked the question, what do you know about the Washer County Lands Bill? And the answer to a person was nothing. This has been the best kept secret I've ever, ever been involved with. The CIA couldn't keep a secret this well. <laughs> so, uh, I've written you several times about the website, uh, recently I asked, can you go to www.washoecounty.us US. US. and on the home page be able to find this lands bill? And the answer is yes. Yes. now. Yes. It must have been very recent. So there, in the middle of the oh, okay. That, that well, okay. I, I, so that that's the question the I asked because the last time I went, you still had to go and you had to know to type in Washer County Lands Bill in order to get to it. So if that's been done, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Commissioner. I just want to tell all of you, thank you for being here. I love hearing your voices. I love listening to what you have to say. And I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you. All right, so our time is up this evening. Um, hopeful that you will come back and, and uh, give us your comments as well on Thursday night with the uh, um, conservation portion of this bill. Again, I ask that you go on the website, washoecounty.us uh, forward slash lands bill and fill out the survey, provide your comments. Uh, we really, uh, really do appreciate the comments that we've heard this evening and thank you very much.
Hello, I'm Amy Ventitulo, Washoe County Communications, and today we're previewing an event for a big initiative, the Washoe County Lands Bill. And with me today is Jamie Rodriguez, a Government Affairs Specialist, who's going to share a little bit about the bill. Jamie, thank you for being here. Thank you, Amy. Yes, the bill, it's very important. Our residents have already felt and experienced the impact of the growth that's occurring within our region. The purpose of the bill is to help make sure that going forward, we're able to continue to grow in a very smart and sustainable way. The second portion of the bill is to really help with the protection and conservation of public lands throughout all of Washoe County, which we know is a huge asset to our residents. We would like to get as much input from the residents as possible since this will impact all of them in some way, shape, or form. If you missed the first meeting on April 24th on the economic development portion of the lands bill, don't worry, we have another meeting April 26th at 5.30, the Reno Sparks Convention Center, where we'll be addressing the conservation portion of the bill. If you can't make the meeting in person, join us live from our YouTube and social media channels where you can see the meeting taking place as it's happening. And please share your feedback on our Open Washoe survey on our website and to find out more information.